everyone, I'm back. Okay, so the last video you saw me do all of the wreath work around the um, outer edge. So now I'm going to start working on these little bristles that I've drawn in. So I've chosen this blue, uh, slaty blue 413 cotton pearl. Um, number eight is the size and I just want to stitch some of these little bristles in. So I'm just going to do a little running stitch. I knew that fibre would drive me nuts. It's going to get caught. Probably should have done it at the end. But anyway, it's in. So I'm just doing a, a stitch along these lines. <coughs> I mentioned in the last video, which was like five minutes for me, but a day for you guys, that I would put the video of Bandit and Pepper playing in the pond when he was really muddy. I'll do that at the end of this video. I'll keep an eye on the time because I think the video goes for like three minutes. So I'll make sure I leave enough time at the end you can see young bandit playing well he thinks he's playing but I'm trying to get his legs clean because he was covered in mud what a dirty little dog we've nicknamed him wombat too you'll see what I mean when you see him he's got a real wombatty if you're from another country other than Australia and you don't know what a wombat is <clears throat> Google it. That's your homework. Go to Google, type in wombat, and have a little read. That's your homework. And Bandit reminds me of a wombat. I've had a, a famous wombat many, many years ago in a show called Country Practice. His name was Fatso. And I was a young girl watching the <coughs> country practice with my fam <laughs> excuse me <coughs> with my family and wombat the local police sergeant had this wombat as a pet well it wasn't a pet he was sort of I don't know what the story was behind wombat fatso was his name he used to get into all sorts of trouble I think the local vet too was involved somehow in looking after Wombat and the policeman. Anyway, it's, it was just so cute. And growing up as a kid, Wombats aren't in Queensland. They're down in uh, mainly Tasmania, but I believe they are in Victoria. They sort of need rainforest, cold country. So Tassie has qu quite a few Wombats. I think they are down south, but they're definitely not here in Queensland doesn't get cold enough for a wombat but I'm telling you things that if you google you will learn so I'm not going to say any more about wombats and I want you all to look up what a wombat is <laughs> so I'm just doing another branch they're going to be good they're just going to break it up a little bit with a little pop of the color that the bird is I'll just stitch this last one. I still haven't decided what I'm going to do with the stars. I think I mentioned on the beginning of this that they were probably going to be something lacy, which I think will be the case still. I haven't thought of anything different. Really, you know, outline them. Uh, I think I can do better than that. I could bead them, but the sharp shape. So beading is not the best for sharp outlines, or sharp, sharp shapes, unless they're tiny EB beads, which I don't really have. So that brings me back to maybe cutting out a piece of lace in the shape of the star and just stitching that down. So that's sort of where I'm tending. But I haven't found any lace that I like yet for the space, so I've got to, got to have a bit of a rummage. Let's see what I can find. So 
So nice, simple stitch, nothing too difficult. And I might put some little French knots and, um, you know, decorative something along there. Could even be some beads. But I won't do that yet. I want to get the beads into position that are connecting the holly to the piece. So I'm going to make sure they get their own space. Because <clears throat> they're technically the feature, I'm thinking. So whether that means these little sprigs that I'm embroidering at the moment don't get anything, I, I don't know. We'll see as it sort of comes together. But it, there is an opportunity to put some little French knots around the sprigs. But beads will be next. So I just want to stitch these two. And then we'll go in and do some beads behind me here where I've come from. And work out a plan. I might even pop a few buttons to I found some um, shell buttons in the shape of stars. And they're not real big, so I'm thinking of having a play with them as well. These here. See those? They're like little mother of pearl um, beads. Now, if you want to find them, if you go to eBay and type in um, buttons, mother of pearl, star, I actually found those from a supplier that's in Hong Kong. And they're really quite affordable. It was only a couple dollars for all of those. And I believe it was even free postage. So I got some um, different shapes in the natural color, but then they also had red ones. So I just got a couple little packets of red as well. And that wasn't even for this Christmas. I did that probably 12 months ago. <coughs> and they came from Hong Kong. So I'm guessing there's a, a factory <coughs> in China, just over the border that manufactures buttons out of mother of pearl shell and the, some of them were timber and oh, they had quite a selection and um, they're actually being shipped out of Hong Kong in smaller parcels so that all of us can sort of just get a little little bit of all things so have a look on eBay okay happy with that a couple little sprigs now let's get beading my favorite thing Let's find a bead needle, so a nice small little head. Oh, look, let's do a gold one first. Well, there's two of them stuck together, doesn't matter. Let's stitch him down. Oops. Oh, I just heard something crash. Bandit. I just have to stand up and see what he's done. Hang on a moment. Oh, he's got his water bucket. He's got a, a, a metal water bucket out there. I had to get real heavy duty stuff for him. Peppa never, never did it. She never emptied buckets and took them off into the garden. Bandit does. He just upturns everything and off he goes. And he's just done it with a um, metal bucket that's his water. So that's what the bang was. Isn't it amazing how dogs are so different? I guess, just like humans, we're all different. So yeah, those two buttons have actually seized together when they put that matte coating on the button. See, one's matte, one's a bit shiny, and it's like stuck together. Oh, looks like I'm not gonna get the needle through because it's literally, it has sealed. Okay, so you can go one way, but you can go in the other way, but you can't get through the middle. Bugger. I'll need a pair of pliers. Oh, there's another one. Oh, oh no, that's all right. I got him. 
Maybe if I get some pliers and break them apart, it will, you know, allow me to get my needle through. Okay, so I'm just doing two stitches through each bead and that really makes sure it stays in position. Okay, so let's grab another and bring my container closer. You can see me rummaging here. I'm putting the big ones on first. Get all your feature beads into position if you are doing beading. And then come back with your next size and then even smaller. So always start with your biggest whether it be a button or a yo-yo or whatever, and then you end up with your smallest element from there. I don't know if that's a rule, but I find that works well. Okay, let's put a third one. I think there's a darker blue. There's a silver, I haven't used them. Itself, it looks silver, but as soon as I put it near those other beads, <clears throat> it takes on a bit of a blue tone, which is pretty cool. So I've got blue, a sort of a pale silvery blue, and champagne gold as my colour scheme. Okay, lovely. Now, just to sort of soften it. You could just do the three beads. We might use some of these. This one here I have in a bigger size and I had intended to use it as my third bead until I spotted that silver one, but we'll use the smaller version of it and pop a few little ones. And it's nearly the same colour as the can't even see the hole. It's faceted and it's just all shimmering at me. Um, it's nearly the same colour as the stick that we just stitched. So it certainly blends well. So I'm just going to pop a few of those in. Oh, Christmas is such a great theme to have a bit of sparkle on our work. Don't be afraid. Grab those sparkly things. And even the winter, winter scenes. You could still use lots of pearls and crystals and beads in, in those scenes to reflect light on your piece, like snow would. When the morning sun catches snow, not that I know because I don't have snow around me here. I have seen it when I've been in China and had a little play. And that was embarrassing. We're driving along a freeway and we come into some areas that had the snow on the side of the road. So we made the driver stop. Let us out, let us out. We're from Brisbane, we don't have snow. So he stopped the car and my husband and I have piled out on the side of a freeway in China and we we had a snowball fight we were playing in it like a pair of kids the gentleman that helps us navigate China and helps us get our stock back he's become quite a good friend he's even come to Australia and stayed with us and him and his wife had a look around and went on to Sydney for a bit of a holiday um, he was just shaking his head pretty much said, you pair are like my kids. As soon as it snows, out go the kids. I'm just looking for a really small needle. So yeah, that was my first experience of snow. 
And then after having gone there quite a few times for my business sourcing stock, um, I saw a lot of snow. But I know it glistens in the morning sun. So beads, I'm just popping a few little, little gold. Let me pick this bead up. Am I even on camera? Yep. A few little gold beads in here as well, just to help give it a bit of shimmer. Oh, this is going to be fun. I won't be able to bead the whole thing on camera because this is going to take hours. But what fun. This will be my job tonight. Oops, lost the bead. Where'd the bead go? There it is, still there. As I just sort of skip around that wreath, dropping little gold beads here and there. The main cluster will be with each leaf of holly. So I made it hard for myself by putting on that eyelash yarn. I knew it would, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm back now at the base of the holly where my main three beads are. And we might look at putting in a pearl or two just for a added bling. Let's just pick up that pearl and stitch. Oh, yeah. love it. So I'm now going to the bottom side of the cluster, coming up down below, closer to the bird, and I'll put in a few, close that before there's pearls everywhere, and I'll just stitch in a few extra of those gold. husband's off for a blood test today. He had a fast. I think um, I mentioned in the video before last that he had a sore eye from his big pinball weekend. So she'd given him just a little eye drop to pop in to fix that up. Well, it's looking heaps better. So he will survive his eye ailment. But she takes one look at him and says, when was the last time you were here, sir? And of course, it's oh, a little while ago. And she click, click, click on the computer, pulls up his file. And he'd been to see a previous doctor that's no longer at the surgery. And she goes, hmm, it has been a while, Mr. McEwen. <laughs> you know what's coming next. I think you will be back next Thursday for full physical. We need to check you out. But first, let's get your blood work. And he's just sitting there going, I knew it. She's got me. <laughs> She come out to the car and um, yeah, <laughs> he, uh, he says, oh, he says, I've got to go back for a physical and she's got blood work and she took my blood pressure and oh, and I just grinned. So, well, you're on the circuit now. So he's cornered, which won't hurt of a checkup. I'm just creeping back along that towards the little bird. Actually, don't go too far, Corinne. Stop, 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 because we have a nest. Yeah, okay. So I nearly wasted beads, so I can stop there. I'll knot that off, and I think I can stitch the nest on, actually, because there's not going to be... No, 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 don't stitch the nest. Stop, because I want to play with the bird. Don't be getting crazy. All right, let's have a little look at those beads. So we've got a little cluster just there of the bigger ones. I've dropped in that little pearl just as a little interest. And then along there, I've got those little gold guys, which I think will carry right through the whole wreath. And then as I go, there'll be a bigger cluster and then thin it out in a bigger cluster. So I'm pretty happy with the way the beads are gonna come together. I'll bring that right up to the camera. 
you can see that with the little gold ones as well so really pretty so that will work now my little bird the first thing I want to do is tidy up these beads because I've got beads everywhere here okay let's close a few things move a few things all right oh the stars let's have a play with them so i think i'll save the bird for the next video because I, I think i want to get the beading done around the wreath which then i think will tell me how elaborate i go on the bird so like one thing at a time otherwise i'll end up not liking it it might be too much let's drop a few of those little stars in amongst it yeah well not there because the bird nest yeah, oh, I like that. I like it, I like it. I still haven't thought what I'm going to do with the big stars. I'm going to stitch this star on. And see how that looks. I don't know if I'll get another video made today. It might be a case of I now just focus on finish the beading on the wreath. Come back tomorrow and work on the bird and i guess have a few decisions about this um the bigger star putting these little star buttons in is going to actually be quite nice because it's carrying the theme of the star a little further than just what i've drawn there'll be these little pops of pearly stars in amongst it so there's one i can knock that off Pepper and Bandit are at my craft window here looking at me. So I do promise I will add to the end of this video the little film I made of them having a bath. Well, Bandit anyway, playing. <clears throat> Which, like I said in the last video, didn't realise at the time why he was so dirty is because he was starting to escape. So if you haven't seen the video before this one, go back and watch it because I explain what happened to my puppy dogs when I lost Pepper briefly. Okay, let's grab another star. Cut that bag back a bit. I can't reach. they're going to be pretty oops that fibrous yarn but it's worth just taking my time and if I do catch it in my thread just get rid of it okay love them so that's a definite it's going to stay all right yeah very good bring that up to the camera see the little buttons they look really good Okay, I think once I find some lace suitable for my stars, <clears throat> I want to embellish the little bird's wing with lace as well. And maybe something will come out of the little search for lace that will get me some elements I can use on the little bird. So, yeah, the next video will be bird, the stars. In the meantime, I can keep working around my piece, um, stitching the beads and the little buttons on and uh, doing the sprigs. I might, might just have a little play with that sprig. Do I do some French knots? Let's just thread that blue up again and have a little, because the sprig is so fine, the French knot might be too much for it. Might just do one here. 
Or is it a colonial knot? I think it's actually a colonial knot. Let's just pop it in. Oh, that's all right. Maybe just if I, one or two, like don't, I'd usually do them in little clusters of three. Because my sprig is so tiny, <clears throat> I don't want to overpower, overpower the piece. And all you see is these little blobby knots. Okay, let's have a little look. I'll do one more up the top here. Guess I can leave them there and have a look at them and see. Yeah, they're all right. Oops, I'm not even in camera. See, just a few little <coughs> knots. I think once my blue line, my red ink line is gone too, it'll help. Okay. All right, guys. Excuse me. <coughs> I'm going to leave it at that. And my voice is going. Hang on a minute. <coughs> Goodness me. I'm going to leave it at that. <coughs> and um, carry on with my beading around. I'll decide about my French knots, whether they stay or go. Okay, I, lo I do like them. Yeah. Do I? I might do them up through here and sort of see how they go. Look, I'm going to do a couple while my camera's still rolling. Just... I think the more detail I add, like little knots like this, will help build the whole image. Oh, I must show you the nativity. I forgot to do it in the video I made just before. I've done a lot of seed stitch. And like I said in the last video, I'm still thinking about um, Mary's dress. So I'm going to do that. Once I get these few little knots in place. Wonder what the next prompt will be. Very exciting. Got little berries. Two more. This one. And one over here. I think the trick is not to put the knot too close to the little branch. Give the branch and the knot its own space. One more down here. I think once all the beads and shimmery bits are on, you're barely going to notice the French knots anyway, but you sort of want with these pieces, the more you look, the more you see. So when you think you're finished, just leave it a moment and have a little look at what else maybe you could add. And I think that's where I'm at with this nativity. It just doesn't quite feel right or feel finished. So I'll just grab that and show you um, where I'm at with it and what I'm thinking to add to it. And then I'll stop the video and I've got plenty of homework to do. So I'm just grabbing this red one. So I have finished all of the seed work, the seed stitch around the, out, uh, the background of my piece. I ended up going to back to the sheep and outlining him again in the thread that I used for his head and ears because it turned out that the seed stitch I used in the sheep, I also used on the background. So he just blended and you couldn't really see the shape of him. So I had to just sort of 
overstitch again his outline, which is really good, really happy with that. And you can see Mary here. I've got this little piece of tatty and I'd really like to include it on her. So I've pinned it around the top edge of her uh, headpiece and I'm thinking the leftover will find a home on the bottom edge of her skirt like so. Just to, just to jazz ear up and she is in the foreground to a degree like the other two and I just feel like it'll balance, balance my piece. Not too worried about Joseph, I think he's got enough going on with his little detail. The cow is a little bit plain for me, so I'm thinking about him um, and maybe, maybe not doing something. But I think once I get Mary's little treatment on, this little bit of tatting, it will sort of, you know, actually probably look pretty good. All right, everyone, I will leave it at that. And in the next video, I'll be back with um, hopefully all my beading done and we can then start working on our little bird and make some decisions about the stars and what lace we'll use to embellish them. Okay, have a lovely day and I will see you all soon. Bye for now. Okay, the situation is this. Mr. Bandit, affectionately known as Wombat, has been busy playing down the back of the block where our uh, water comes out of our septic system in a sprinkler. The sprinkler head and all the pipes have been chewed off by Ms. Pepper. So now it's just a, a gentle drizzle of water that comes out into the garden beds down there. So Mr. You Know Who here has found it and has arrived this morning to come and join us for breakfast. Of course, could not happen because it's a very bad dog with these muddy paws. So what I'm gonna do is bring out the pond, which Pepper thoroughly enjoyed in summer, and fire it up for Mr. You Know Who Wombat to see if he wants to maybe play in here instead of down there. So I'm just gently turning on the hose. <laughs> and it's now filling up with some water, which will in turn wash said dog. And hopefully this will be his little play area instead of the mud down the back. We will see. Stay tuned. Hey Bandit. Bandit. Hello. You little pig. Hey Pepper. What are you reckon about all this? He's feral, isn't he? You would never have done this. Oops. He's going to get hold of that hose and wet us all. Ah. Stay in the pond, dirty dog. Oh my goodness. How bloody cute. Hop in the pond, bandit. Hop in. Get in. That's it. There he goes. In again. We can subtly wash his paws. gonna go messy I can see it and it is working it's giving himself a hiker bath lovely okay bye